Welcome to the Crazy Town Podcast. I'm Jonas. And I'm TNT Don. I'm Mike the Explosive One. Let's crack into another one. TNT. Yo. We got a person in the NBA who might get lifetime banned. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Okay, I'm not familiar scandal. with this. We're not familiar with this. Yeah, so uh, have you ever heard of Jante Porter? Jante Porter. No, who, what team does he play I, for? Is he a player? You're going to ask me that, too. I don't know. <laughs> okay, fair enough. I don't even know, to be honest. <clears throat> That's fine. I could always the Raptors, just, maybe. He plays for the Raptors? Yeah, it looks like it. Okay. So, uh, so this guy, I, I want to say he's a good player, too. I don't know. I, at, spoiler alert, I don't follow NBA anymore. Uh, spoiler alert? Yeah, spoiler alert, <laughs> as you couldn't tell from my ignorance. Um, so, anyways, what happened was this guy, uh, they, you know, Vegas, like, tracks bets. You know, like, they know how many people have bet on, like, a, a thing or, like, a prop bet or, like, a whatever. Mm-hmm. So there was <clears throat> there was a couple instances, there was two, about two months apart, um, where there was unusual activity on a prop bet for him to get an under of so many points. Like, he was supposed to get under 20 points or under 15 points or, like, whatever. Okay. And okay. there was, like, unusual activity. It wasn't a large dollar amount, like, ten or $20,000. But it was it was unusual activity for that sort of bet on like a random game. Okay. okay. Well, it got very suspicious because in the in when you say unusual activity, you mean there was a higher degree of bets placed on a certain extremity, than either the were. amount or the number okay. of bets. One of the something. So there was, somebody tracked. was placing large bets on a like just an a odd, ran, like a event. Tuesday night. Jonte Porter is going to get under ten points. Yeah. Thing like okay. Yeah, you're going to get a couple, but why is there like ten thousand bets on that for no reason? Right. Like, fair enough. Fair okay. enough. Um, so, but what, like the first example, it was, I don't know. He played like three minutes and then he left with an undisclosed eye injury. Like, so he only ended up with like two points and then, and then the other game, he only played like 10 minutes and left with like a back injury or something like, so what they're saying is, is that he did it on purpose. So whoever did the bet could win. Right. Like, and if he did that. Ban- that's a lifetime. He's affecting the game. What? Yeah. So it ain't like the baseball player who's maybe betting on on games or whatever. Uh, I don't know. I still say that Pete Rose. If you bet on yourself, that is yeah, but insane. He, but he he left the game early with a quote unquote injury. Yeah, yeah, to potentially. Uh, yeah, like, we're that not is talking, way worse. We're not talking about Pete Rose. Yeah, here. Like, Pete Rose like, bet on himself. Like, I'm gonna hit a home run tonight, and you hit three. Yeah, like, I I'm all, I agree. Yeah, bet on me. I'm gonna hit five tonight. <laughs> <laughs> right, Shit, let's but do if it. You're like, I'm gonna score under ten points, and you're like three minutes in, you're like, I'll oh, coach my eye. I yeah, I like I say, betting for motivation, I don't see that as a problem. You like, I'm gonna score five touchdowns, 100. percent But betting to take a dive is like the worst thing, and like it's always, I always takes me back to like the whole idea of like a boxer, because boxers were famous for doing that. Because the longer you're in the ring, the more damage you're gonna take. So right. essentially, you bet against yourself, and then you take a dive. Right, and then you win a ton of money, right? Yeah, but you also, you know, you affect your your respect in the well, boxing right. community. Especially you lose to someone you aren't suppo- supposed to lose to. There's right? no... See, a lifetime ban is honestly a blessing because there's no way he would ever find a team. Nobody wants to play with that guy. Nobody wants to play with the guy who who sat up there and took a dive to earn a couple extra bucks that's insane yeah, and i don't know yeah and, and obviously it's still under investigation they're trying to figure out well and i think absolutely big, and i think the big deal about it was he is a he is a good player um, yeah but it does it doesn't mean that he's a, a good person oh yeah one of them it was he left with an illness and the other one was an eye injury see, the, the thing is it's like he's he's in the nfl nba I mean, he's in the he's in the nba i mean he's in the nba so he's making like enough money Oh, yeah, he's making a lot of money. I'm wondering how large these bets were. I'm, I'm sure that you don't have all that information. I'm not going to ask you to have it at, at your disposal. It's truth, not facts, anyways. But uh, it would have to be for, like, an exorbitant amount for it to even be, like, nearly worth it to me. Um, now, I know these bookies, if they lose large sums of money like that, they're definitely going to be, uh, like, hypersensitive to that. Right, but I also know is that for the most part, it's a it's a relatively uh, anonymous process, right? Like I'm sure, like it's attached to your bank card or whatever or whatever format you go through. But I don't know if they can necessarily. Oh, the bets? 
Yeah, I don't know if they can necessarily release that information. Well, I mean, I don't, because there's he nothing was the one who made the bet, right? It's just exactly. Very fishy. It's just fishy that there's unusual activity, and then that night you happen to like leave the game with an eye injury, my, and then happen to leave the game with a illness. Yeah, I guess my point is is that they're going to have a hard time tracking down who even made the bets because nothing illegal was done. Oh, they'll know. The I mean, they'll know who made the bet. And will they be able to? Will they disclose that information though? Because nothing, it's nothing. I mean, illegal. they can. I mean, you're in a casino, like you, uh, they're on camera. Was it a casino or was it a website? Oh, I don't know. Or probably, was it like it's, we aren't doing like, but it's not the horse track anymore. We're going up to the counter and saying, "Hey, I want a ticket on I got a ticket Lone on Ranger." Asparagus. Can I get Lone Ranger to win for the big one? It's like everything's <laughs> online anymore, so it's attached to a debit card, and that could be attached to anybody's card number. And I don't even know if they can release that information. I'm pretty sure there's. I'm like sure policy. if there's a criminal investigation, they can release it. What's the crime? Fraud. Fraud. That's literal fraud. Fraud. Fixing a game is fraud. Fixing a bet is fraud. Fixing a game is fraud. Yes. But I didn't fix the game. Well, no, but he he fixed a bet. That's fraud. Is fixing a game fraud? Yeah, I mean anything that like you intend. Are, are you saying this or are you sure? Are you positive? Because I don't you want you to be wrong. I don't want you to be wrong. Someone, it is fraud. That's it. You're intentionally deceiving someone. Yeah, I mean, fraud. I could see how like if this was widespread, it could be problematic. So I, mean, I it's imagine problematic for one for one happening. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, here's the definition of fraud: wrongful or criminal deception intended to result in financial or personal gain. Okay, okay. So it's yeah, it's it's he intentionally. Yeah, yeah. They're saying he intentionally left the game so someone would win money. Now he probably owes somebody money. He's like, listen, I'll just I'll you you bet on the under, I'll leave the game. Okay, so let me hit you with another angle on this one, real quick. Okay, I'm Jonathan. angular. Let me hit you with another angle. What do you feel the over under? on this happening more often than not and um, this just being the one outlier where the guy was a little too flaky iceberg with effect it. man exactly you know what's happening i mean they could do that shit all the time they, they i mean they literally just like it's like oh hey the over under is 25 points for me they get to like 22 23 points they're up by a lot and like hey coach can i sit down like like let the let's let let, let the young yeah, blood play. I'm yeah. I'm, not, I'm good. Yeah. And he's like, coach is like, okay, and just let, it, no no harm no foul. The problem is, is when you trigger unusual bets and they notice. That's yeah. you, get, you get greedy. And there has to be there has to be some sort of uh, criteria for these these bookies. Well, there has to be. The, a um, and that's what happened. There was a there was a point shaving scandal in Arizona State in the mm -hmm. '90s. Where there was a player that was in, involved in in with the uh, I don't know if it was the, the like the hardcore mob or some sort of criminal criminal, and they were just they were shaving points off the games like so like if the spread was like seven they were making sure they lost by seven like that mm. kind of stuff like missing a free throw like you know very very like no one's gonna notice or, and then what happens yeah. is they get greedier and greedier and greedier yep. and greedier and they want to keep doing it and keep doing it and keep and then they end up getting caught because yep. they eventually they end up like people talk or people get mad or like it's too noticeable or whatever when there's actually a really good movie about it it was like a confession it's called something confessions of a campus bookie it was okay. like some some kid on on campus was a bookie and one of the he had one of the players in his pocket and then it like yeah, he just started being like just being a bookie at school to like make money. You know? All right, that's actually pretty cool, Jones, that you even know about that. I've never heard of such a thing. Yeah, it's an interesting. Uh, it was the uh, Arizona State basketball team. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they got in some trouble. So I, I do, I, I seriously do feel like this happens more, more often than we are giving it credit for. It's just bad when you do it in such a fashion where you shine a light on it and you could potentially like f it up for not only yourself but uh for your for your teammates. I guess I don't know. How do you feel about it, Jonas? If it, we know it's happening. So do we? Do 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 you and I and everybody else as normal people? Do we feel like? We need to cl clamp it up. You need to become friends with an NBA player? No, Johnson, no we can't become friends. I mean, that would be cool if we could be. If you're an NBA player and you listen to the channel, befriend us. All right? <laughs> we would love to help you get I would famous. love to bet on how many free throws you're going to make tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyways, that's all that we have for this episode. Please make sure to like and subscribe for Jonas. TNT. Uh, we out.